Hey y'all, welcome back to my shop. Today I'm going to be wiring in this little uh, tool setter that I got off of uh, Amazon. And the good thing about shopping on Amazon is you can get these little things uh, pretty reasonable. I think this one was $32.99. Uh, the bad thing about shopping on Amazon to buy some of this stuff is a lot of times they come with absolutely no documentation at all. So uh, it's got four wires. Doesn't even tell you which wire goes to which switch. There should be two little switches in here. One for when the tool touches off here and another as a safety thing. When If it doesn't work and it goes all the way down, it should hit the cycle stop switch there but i need to figure out which uh which of these uh wires is which and to do that i'm going to hook up my own meter and check those out okay i've got my ohm meter connected here uh i'm going to start out using the orange wire and the brown wire and i've got my little alligator clip leads going there and then if I push this, I think I've got this where you can see this. You can see that those two wires work that first switch. And if I push it on down, I can't really tell anything. So that means that the other two, the blue and the green, should work the other switch. So let me test those just to be sure. And if I push this all the way down now, yeah. So the blue and the green are for the cycle stop and the orange wire and the brown wire are for the, uh, the tool setter. So I have to get a resistor wired in according to the Masso documentation that I got online. So fortunately I've got some of those resistors in because um, I had to use one to do wire the touch probe yesterday. So let me break out the soldering station and I'll get those uh, soldered in. Okay, I'm going to try to show you what I've done here. I brought that uh, wire from the tool setter in here, and I've attached some longer wires here because I had to solder in those uh, resistors anyway. So the resistors are here on the red and blue wires, and they will go to the 24 volts positive right here. And then the other wire, which is the black and now the yellow, are over here on a couple of pins. I don't know what number they are. I'll know when I get back over to the, uh, the Masso. Uh, and you can see I'm starting to run out of pins. I used the DB25 cable, and now I'm thinking I probably underestimated how much stuff I was going to have going, and I probably should have got a uh, DB37 cable and a couple of 37 breakout boards. But uh, we'll see what happens. I can always buy uh another pair of 25s and, and another cable and run some more that way if it, if i need to and but i can tell i'm going to have to do some upgrading here already in the very near future so also another thing you might notice this in previous videos was an eight position block and it was starting to get really crowded trying to cram all this stuff in there so i swapped it out for a 12 position block so Hopefully there won't be too much more stuff going in there. And I still got to put a, uh, a cover on this. I'm going to make a cover and use a clear acrylic uh, on here so you can kind of see in there. But I kind of wish I had uh, thought this a little harder. I thought it would be neat just to put a cleat on the back of this box and hang it off of the uh, 
the frame because it's got that rail running here. But now I wish I had just mounted it up high on the back of the machine where an old man like me can just be standing up and looking here. So that may be another modification that I do in the new, near future. But for now, I need to get over there to the Masso and wire from the breakout board over there to the Masso. And uh, I'll see you when I get over there. Okay, I'm going to try to use this pencil to point to uh, what I was doing over there. I couldn't tell what number it was. I just counted down from the top, and this thing is turned different over there in the box. But this black wire right here, right next to this other thicker black wire, that is on uh, pin 19 on the breakout board. And then this yellow wire, which is for the uh, cycle stop, uh, is on pin 18. So they come up, and I'll try not to make you dizzy here. I'll crank this up. Okay. So that black wire is running from pin 19 up here to pin 10, and then the yellow wire is running from pin 18 up here to pin 11. So I need to go into the Masso configuration and set the pin 10 for the tool setter and pin 11 for the cycle stop. Uh, and then we can check this thing out and see if it's going to work or if I let the magic smoke out. Okay, you got to love a USB microphone. I've already shot two other clips and had to go back and redo them because the mic dies and gives you absolutely no warning when the uh, battery is about to go dead. But at any rate, I, I'm going to show you what I did here. I've already done it, but I'll go through and show you. I came down, I went to my setup page and came down to input 10, which is where the uh, black wire was going back here on the Masso. And I just double click on this and I'll have to show you here. You double click on that, it'll come up with a list. You go down until you find um, the um, tool setter and then put that in there. And then also these were high when I first turned it on. So you have to set it to high like that. And then you can hit the space bar and you can see it change to high and then back to low. So you just set it for low because uh, that's what it needs to be. And then for input 11, uh, which was the yellow wire back there going to uh, pin 11 on the Masso. I did the same thing and set it to cycle stop and also had to set it low. So if I move this out of the way now, I've got the tool setter sitting over here on the table. And if I press lightly, you can see that the tool setter uh, is being triggered there. That would be if a tool presses down just a little bit. And then if for some reason something doesn't work, and it goes down real hard, you can see the cycle stop will uh, trigger as well. So it is working uh, correctly as far as I can tell. So now I need to uh, get it mounted in the table. Okay, I think where I'm gonna mount this thing is right here in this location right around here. And I'm gonna mount it from under the table. So I'll be using my spindle uh, although I'm sure I'm going to have to lower it some so it can reach all the way through this. I'll be putting a hole this diameter through both the three-quarter MDF and the uh, three-quarter plywood that I have down here as the base table. Uh, this little gadget here, I didn't mention that before, but uh, this, this tool set is really for use with like a CNC mill or something like that because it's got that protective... Uh, sheathing on the the cable where you you know protect it from coolant and stuff and this little thing here you can have a a small air hose connected in here and then when you trigger it right before you do your touch off of your tool this little thing right here's got a slot and it will blow a little puff of air and clean any dust or chips or coolant or whatever off the top of that tool setter that way you'll get a good accurate reading I'm not going to need that, so I, I think with just a couple of screws, you can take that out. Uh, and you can see from the back here that there's steel channels running here. Uh, you can see there's an opening right in between here, about eight inches or so. So 
I'm going to mark it carefully and uh, make sure I don't hit that, that steel channel because that, that won't be good. But uh, then I'll 3D print some spacers and I'll be able to adjust the height. I still haven't uh, surfaced this spoil board, so I'm going to make sure when I set it up, I will put it well below the surface of this MDF uh, to make sure that uh, to make sure I can surface this, or I might even just take it off before I do that, and then surface it, and then maybe move it back up flush or something. I might do that. But anyway, let me get started uh, getting that hole made. I swapped out the bed and put in a quarter inch upcut extended reach uh, bit that I got from uh, Cody at Cadence Manufacturing and Design. And you can also see that I slid the spindle down in the mount quite a bit too to make sure I could reach all the way through there. Okay, I got this thing mounted underneath the table and it's currently just about flush or maybe even sticking up just a hair. The 3D printed spacer I made, I made it about three quarters of an inch. So I haven't surfaced this yet. So when I get ready to surface it, I will just remove this and then reinstall it. And then I can measure how much it's sticking up and then just go 3D print a new spacer to get it back down either flush or maybe even a little bit uh, below this. But uh, it's working good. Let me uh, home it for you and show you how this thing works. I have it set up in the configuration that every time it homes now, it will come back to this point and uh, touch off that tool to get the height. So that's working really well. One thing I have also done, and I'll show you in the Masso controller settings where I did it, but I always had this thing home to the back right. That's where I like to home my machines. And that was simply because when I would run a project, it was real easy just to reach over and hit the home button and let everything go to the back right and get out of the way. And then I could take my workpiece off and do whatever. But now that uh, I've got it enabled where it's going to come here and check the tool after it homes every time, I decided I'd better set up the parking. So I can come to the MDI command over here on the screen and just put G30. And that's the command for it to go park. And it will now go back to... Uh, five inches in and five inches over. So it's not quite going all the way home, but that way at the end of the day, I can shut it off here. And when I come out, uh, first thing I do when I home it, it'll home and then come up here and check whatever tools is in it. So let me show you on the Masso configurations how I did that. Okay, let me go through some of these uh, settings that I changed here so you can see what I did. I jogged the z-axis over and got the the tool directly over and in the center of that tool setter and then i jotted down the numbers and this is what they were the x position is minus 35.04932 and of course i got to have that enabled uh, the tool setter y position is minus 41.08242 and that's enabled the Z, I only brought it down a quarter of an inch. Uh, you know, that you could, I could probably bring that on down a little bit uh, and be safe there. And then the tool zero feed rate, I have it currently set at 30 inches a minute while it seeks out the, uh, the tool setter. So that's how you enable that to get it to come 
check the tool after each home. And then the other thing I did was I came to the tool changer, came to manual tool changer. And then these numbers are the location where I want the machine to come to stop for me to manually change the tool. Uh, and the Y I left the same and the X axis, it's just six inches over to my right. So I can just change the tool, hit cycle start, and it will move back over that six inches above the tool setter and come down and check the tool height. Okay, the other thing that I did as far as the parking, I come here to uh, tools and work offsets. And if you come down here, let me change it. You can see the bottom one here is parking. So you double click on that and I just called it parking. And I wanted to get it out of the way, but I didn't, you know, obviously I'm not going to be using the homing thing again because since I have it set up to come check the tool. So I just get it out there somewhere close in that back right corner. So the offset is now minus five on the X, minus five on the Y, and the Z is still zero. So it'll stay all the way up. And uh, now I can put a, I can either go to MDI and type in G30, which is the command to uh, go park, or I can just put a G30 command at the end of my programs. And if I want it all the time, I can go into my post processor and modify that and have it where it adds the G30 at the end of every program, which is probably what I'll do because I'm sure I'm going to forget to put it in there sometimes if I have to do it, uh, you know, that way, if I have to remember to do it. But if I have it where it's put in there automatically, then as soon as the program finishes, it'll move to that position and be out of the way. So pretty excited to have this uh have this set up and, and going and now all that's left to do is uh to surface the machine bed so as soon as i do that i'll be uh, having lots of projects coming your way if you made it to the end of this video i thank you very much if you would please do me a favor and post a comment down below just say i made it or something like that if you enjoy watching cnc content and you're not subscribed to my channel yet be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications so you'll know when I upload a new video. Until the next one, thank you very much for watching.